Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Bayside Shakedown, a Japanese film from 1998 that is a continuation of the related television series which I have not seen. However, I do want to point out right off the bat that I thoroughly enjoyed this theatrical film despite the fact that I have not seen the J-drama. There were a few references to events in the series that I did not understand, but this operates as a standalone film very well, I think. Now, the story is about the investigative division within the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. Now, these cops are attempting to solve a variety of cases, one of which involves a dead man in a river. It's difficult to tell at first whether or not it's a suicide or a murder, but there are some odd characteristics to the body that sends them toward their first lead to solving how he died. In addition, someone is engaging in petty thefts within the police station itself, which is driving some of these cops crazy because some of their personal belongings are getting snatched. But the most high-profile case of the film soon arrives, the kidnapping of the police commissioner, which prompts headquarters to assign their own investigation team and push out our local heroes, who are, you know, instead assigned to menial tasks that are vaguely associated with that case, so that they kind of get the shaft, at least early on. Now, the main thing to look for when watching this film is the many satirical references to, uh, well, actually, that criticize various aspects of Japanese culture. The big one is the presence of bureaucracy and unnecessary red tape that actually hinders efficiency in the solving of cases. But there are also references to office politics, disillusioned youths, bad parenting, internet subcultures, and gun laws. Uh, at times, the references are a bit subtle, so it's important to identify the structure of the movie early on and kind of sometimes you kind of look for the stuff, but it's, it's there for sure. Quite a bit going on under the surface here, too. Like when you see a room of cops who are debating about the specific wording to be used for conference room nameplates instead of actually investigating the case itself, you are probably ask yourself during scenes like this, like, why are these people wasting their time on stuff like this? And then you're like, oh, that's one of the points of the film. So it does a very nice job of touching upon those many issues. Consequently, there are quite a bit of, there's quite a bit of everyday humor in Bayside Shakedown. I love the comedy in this movie. It's very dry, laid back, and witty. It mostly avoids wacky slapstick and crazy shenanigans, you know what I mean? The tone of this film is actually very nicely balanced as well because it shifts back and forth between like lighter moments and more serious moments throughout the runtime. It really does feel organic, and they actually complement one another, so it's, it's a good genre bender for sure. It also helps to keep you off guard at times. I mean, there are a few sequences that feel like they're going to be serious, and they're actually setting up a satirical reference instead for, for a giggle, so I like that. There's one scene early on involving a, the dead body in the stream that perfectly encapsulates the entire film. If you enjoy that scene, you're in for a good time here. I do think that viewers who have worked for a decently large company will definitely appreciate some of the corporate humor in Bayside Shakedown. The whole expense receipt subplot is just, it's good stuff. If you've ever worked for a company where you've had to submit expense receipts for reimbursement, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, the lead actor here is a man by the name of Yuji Oda, who I've only seen in a, a few other films. Uh, Whiteout was a disappointing actioner with him, but I did enjoy Star Reformer a lot. So if you like him in Bayside Shakedown when you see it, you may want to check that one out as well. I do think that Yuji's performance in this franchise is very charming and charismatic. He can play it straight, but he also has good comedic timing. That's kind of important for this, you know, dramedy, so to speak. The lead actress is Eri Fukatsu. Now, if the name sounds familiar, it's because you may have recognized her in the film Villain from 2010. She was very good in that. She's actually really funny in Bayside Shakedown. She doesn't take any crap from anyone, and it's amusing to watch. We also get a small supporting role from Kayoko Koizumi, uh, the lead actress from Penance in Tokyo Sonata. She's actually really creepy 
in Bayside Shakedown. Definitely a memorable performance. She, she kind of unnerved me a little bit. Yeah, so uh, ladies hold their own in this. The music in this movie, it's quite good. It shifts between like atmospheric synth and catchy beats, which I liked. Camera work is very energetic. Keeps you uh, involved with everything that's happening. It's nicely edited. Very nicely paced film that keeps moving along. Definitely has like a crowd-pleasing feel to it too, which, which uh, you know, keeps you involved. So, yeah, I definitely recommend Bayside Shakedown, which is moderately available on DVD. I think it's usually available in Region 3 format with English subtitles. So check it out. And as always, we will see you next time.